So for test seven, um, that is the word attack test. And this test, it measures the student's ability to apply phonic and structural analysis, analysis skills um, to the pronunciation of unfamiliar printed words. Um, Basil is six lowest correct, and the ceiling is six highest correct. And like the other tests, the test administrator can also describe the ease in which the individual could identify the items. Um, and as the other tests before, correct responses receive a one, incorrect responses receive a zero. And the total number of all correct items answered and all the items below the bezel are recorded in the number correct box. All right, so test number eight, um, this is an oral reading test. And this is kind of unfamiliar territory for me because I haven't um, tested anything beyond um, test eight. Uh, this test measures short reading accuracy. Um, so the students would read a sentence um, and those sentences would eventually become increasingly difficult. Um, the reason why I haven't really administered this test yet is because my students that I test um, are usually uh, first or second graders in the particular school where I come from. Um, students in those grades really do struggle with reading. So it just makes common sense if a student can't read um, that we wouldn't be doing the oral reading test. Um, but if I were to administer this test, um, the basil and the ceiling rules, they actually don't apply. The scoring is um, based on um, specific group of items and um, it's very much like the, the written portion um, where you have to look at the manual, the examiner's manual to score it. So if the student receives, um, re reads a sentence with no errors, then the student receives a score of two. If the student makes um, one error in the reading the sentence, um, then they would receive one. And then if a student makes two or more errors, the student would receive a zero. Test number nine, um, it is a time test. It's the sentence reading fluency test. Um, it measures the student's reading rate and it requires both reading and writing skills for this. Um, the, basil, the basil is a one item, and then the time limit is three minutes. The test administrator can also describe the character of the individual's reading rate. Um, they can record that right on the test booklet. And each response receives a one, incorrect responses receive, receive a zero, and the skipped items are ignored. Test number 10. Test number 10 is math facts fluency. Um, it is also a time test. This test measures the speed in which a student can solve um, problems. Uh, it starts out simple like addition, subtraction, and then moves on to multiplication problems. The basil is um, one item, and the test administrator can also describe the character of um, the individual's rate of performance. Each correct response receives a one, and then the incorrect response receives a zero. Uh, transposed numbers are incorrect. So if a student, for example, if the answer is 12 and the student writes 21, um, that would mean the student is incorrect on that response. All right, the last test in the standard battery of test is uh, test number 11. It is the sentence writing fluency test. It is a time test. It's a five minute test and it measures the individual skill in formulating and writing simple sentences quickly. Um, the basil is one item. Um, the test administrator can also record the individual's performance to describe it as they had um, been able to describe some of the individual's um, character in the, taking the test um, and their performance as well. Um, it looks like um, for this test, the correct responses would receive a one and, and correct responses would receive a zero. Um, skipped items are incorrect, and then if you can't read an item, um, it's also incorrect. So what do the scores mean? Um, the student scores, once they're all calculated, are compared to other scores um, of students who are in the same age or grade. Um, there are norms that are based on the average performance of these students who are the same um, age as the student taking the test and in the same grade of the student taking the test. Um, the scores are available for interpretation, and there's a list of them in the um, examiner's manual of what kind of um, what kind of things you can get out of the scores. So, uh, relative proficient, proficient, proficiency indexes, cognitive, academic language proficiency, 
proficiency levels and percentile rankings and standard scores. Um, the raw score re received on each subtest are converted into W scores, um, which is a transformation of the rash um, ability scale. And, you know, this is an area I'm going to be very honest with you because I'm just starting um, to administer the Woodcock Johnson. I am constantly learning more of, of what I can gain um, by interpreting these scores. So this is an area where I'm definitely needing to learn more. And I, I can always look at the manual, but then also asking my peers and my mentors of how to interpret these scores. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to be something that I will be learning for years to come. I also wanted to talk about when you should use the Woodcock Johnson. Um, my particular school district uses it um, to measure where a student is at academically um, uh, in comparison with their peers as well or as especially to see if they're meeting up to the academic um, performance levels that they should be at um, in relation to their uh, IQ test. Um, you can use it to measure what kind of accommodations a student might need to help them academically. If they, they are struggling um, in a particular area and you can see a weakness that is related to that area, it helps you come up with accommodations of how you can help that student um, fill that gap and help them academically. It can also measure to see if a student has a specific learning uh, disability, such as in reading or math. Um, so my particular school district, we use these on students as we're measuring them to see if they do have a uh, specific learning disability. We'll um, give them the Woodcock Johnson tests um, one through seven at this point. Uh, if a student, um, if a student is showing that they have a particular weakness in reading or math. Um, we'll look at these scores and we'll see what kind of accommodations can be made for, for them so that it can help them close up that gap, um, help them perform better in their general ed classroom. So that is the, um, the presentation on the Woodcock Johnson 4. Uh, again, that's just the standard battery of tests that I covered for this particular presentation. And I'm really excited that I, I am learning more about what this test means for students, um, how to administer it. And then again, I have a lot more um, ground to cover when working on interpreting those scores. But um, help having colleagues to turn to and mentors to turn to to help understand what these scores mean um, has been such a, a big deal in my life and being able to help my students more.